Okay, so a little bit about me. I'm a, the technologist or director of outreach technology uh, for continuing studies at UW Madison. That's my main hat. Um, and the reason this project I'm going is because I'm this. I'm also as a small part of my appointment, uh, the instructor for UW Extension's independent learning course in German for reading knowledge, which is the uh, distance learning equivalent to the regular German 391 taught, uh, mainly on, I guess, just in Madison. I'm not sure if any other campuses offer German 391, which is uh, has no prerequisites, but it takes you it takes students through um, the ability to read advanced German by the end of the semester. So it's a, a lot of um, syntax to cover along the way. And when I found teaching it at a distance, I was really at a disadvantage not having something visual to start drawing arrows and circles on sentences to talk about why students are having problems reading this foreign language. So the, the to I have two goals and topics for today, or a topic and a goal. The, top, the topic is to demonstrate syntax on Tangler for you, um, partly also to, to thank you for letting me develop it with the Curriculum Redesign Grant. And the goal is really to get you, the LTDC reps across the state, to try and be advocates for syntax on Tangler at your campuses, because I would really like to see it used more. I've, I've found it, a lot of faculty are interested in using it, but they really need a little bit of hand-holding to start actually doing something in it. Because as you'll see in the presentation, this isn't just a ready to plug in bit of content. I did, this is a way for instructors to write content. And I think that's the main hurdle. But by the time of the end of, end of this presentation, I'm going to ask you what you think the main hurdle is um, and yes, ask for your feedback on which direction we should go next. So the, there's a little slide here demonstrating what I think uh, the original impetus is, it turned out to be have a lot more applications than this, but the original impetus is when learners see a foreign language, they expect the words to come in a similar functional order as their own language. So in this sentence, uh, in the German text, den Mann beißt der Hund, the learner understands the individual words. And they might say if they look it up in the dictionary of their memorized vocabulary, and so they interpret this as the man bites the dog, because they just expect the same order. In reality, German is not built the same structure as English, not in the same order. So even though they understood the words, they completely missed the meaning, in, other words, in which case this is the dog bit the man, or bites the man. And it, so that was the original impetus, and it turned out it will have broader applications, as I see, as you'll see. So it, um, uh, let me jump now to the Syntax Untangler homepage, which I would like you also to uh, bookmark and spread it widely. Uh, you can see we also have a Facebook page just trying, trying to get more attention for this offering. And at the top, you'll see I have a tagline, which is how I'm currently summarizing what the utility is of Syntax Untangler, which is teach your students how to figure out tricky texts in any language. It's the shortest Twitterable, tweetable summary I could think of. So I, I think, let's see, I can now see this moderator slide. Maybe I should just do a quick poll, yes or no. I think I would like to go into the actual authoring tool and show you how easy it is to create content. But if you would like me to go to a little more higher level, discussion, let's say a uh, yes or no question, should I go into the authoring and create questions with you? All right, I see a bunch of yeses coming my way. Okay, thank you. So first I'll give you, if right here on the, this is, and you too, actually, if this is a good time if you have a, a large screen and you have two browser windows open, you can go ahead to the instructor tools and start creating yourself uh, here with this link, create a new account, your own account right now. It's a pretty instantaneous process, just like on Facebook or Gmail or anything else. Create yourself a new account, and then you could follow along with this with your own um, account, but you don't have to. So back to this main page. Um, let's go through the training level first. And this I use 
both to train my students or anybody else's students. I wrote it sort of in English so that any instructor in any language could use it, assuming your students have a native language of English. And it's also handy as a quick demo for you guys. What is Syntax Entanglement? First, you see it's a web application. It's got a handy, nice, friendly URL. And there's no plugins involved. It's, it does require uh, HTML5, CSS3 support. So you need to have a, what I call a modern browser and not something like Internet Explorer 8 or 7 or 6 or basically anything except old Internet Explorer. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have 9 yet. So that is the sort of major technical hurdle right now. So on to uh, this. What you're seeing here is a comment screen. We have this button here, I'll click the next screen button. You see the first interactive demonstration. If you're following along on your own browser, you could try and play it yourself. What we see here is a question title, a little bit of technical instructions, which it's fine if the reader doesn't notice. If they're really lost, they can read that bit of instructions. Here's the main primary text in the target language. And here's some instructions which uh, go with this primary text. In this case, there's two things the student is asked to do. Highlight the subject phrase in the sentence. So let me try collecting a wrong answer. I could, that's a wrong selection. You get a sound effect. And uh, try the right selection. Oh, there's, there's two methods of selecting. So there's double click. That's not right. Or there's click and drag, either left to right or right to left. Those are all wrong. So here's the right answer. Aha, positive feedback. And the other part of the question, the ins instructions the instructor wrote is highlight the adverb. And so there's two, in this case, two parts to the right answer. An R, all positive feedback. So that's highlighting. Essentially, it's you have a primary text. Certain regions are right answers, and the question is defined purely by this free text area here, whatever the instructor specified. The other um, tricky part is sometimes students get used to the double clicking because the answers are whole words. But in some languages or in some grammar questions or concepts, you're dealing with parts of words. So it's good to practice partial selection of words. And that can be a correct answer. The other um, type of question we've implemented so far is the tagging question, which is essentially a more complex highlighting question. We have a primary text and three tags down here, which the instructor can color code however they like. In this case, we've just used simple abbreviations here, but you could put whatever text you want inside each of these tags. Uh, S is subject, or I, ABV is adverb, PP is prepositional phrase. I can start in whichever one I want if I'm the student here. I'll say it's easy to find a prepositional phrase. I know by as a preposition. So I'll click that first. That was not the right answer. This is the right answer. I get a little confirmation there. I can no longer, uh, I can do. I don't, know, I don't know my own software yet. So adverb is a partial word. There's two, three characters. And the subject, you. You got all the three tags, you're done. So that's the content. I'll just back out of here. This is just a URL. And go to the instructor tools. Um, I have an account, a couple actually. It's easy to create. Uh oh. Let me try again. Sometimes your cookies need clearing. I had, just because I am um, showing this on the web, I increase the font size of my browser. So I'll take it back to normal size. You can see the big picture of I've got four units I created, which is simple as clicking a Create New Unit button. Let's do that right now. Create a new unit. Uh, pick a name. This is a LTDC test unit. Now, this is a nice feature. In the URL, you get to pick your own URL um, in case you want to hide your or so in case you, the instructor, wants to hide your content, you can pick a secret URL and never tell anybody about it. Or you can decide to publish it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, let's call this test LTDC or something simple. It is now live on the web. Um, we can try that by hitting the play button, which just simply opens up a window. 
And we see the URL is a uh, pretty clean URL, uh, test only DC, and of course there's nothing in it yet. But we'll just flip over to the other window. Let's create our first question. Edit the unit, add a question. There's only three things you can do. Create a highlighting question, a comment screen, and our tagging question. Let's first show that you can use any character set. That's an important feature here. Not just English or Roman character sets. Anything that fits in UTF-8. Uh, I have a quick example here um, in Chinese. A highlight. I'll create a highlight question using a Chinese text. So here's the, the title of the question is the, the title of this poem I've quoted. I don't actually read Chinese yet. Um, where is my tab? Here we go. Paste it right in. And so this is just assuming I just copied and pasted this from Wikipedia. The primary text is the first stanza of this poem. Uh, currently, you can't in the primary text include line breaks or white spaces. Uh, that's our, our next version 2.2 should have that, which we're working on. Uh, in our spare time and in the evenings, so it's uh, Sean McMullen and I. Uh, instructions to the player. In this case, we're not assuming that the students have mastery of the target language, so we'll actually you can write your instructions in Chinese or English. I've got all this, and here's what I can show you in the instructions. Unlike in the primary text, you can include some HTML and white space. Um, let's just do that right now. Quick example. Let's, say, let's make this title italic, for example. And you could put um, a link in here. I'm not going to actually fill in the HRL, uh, the destination right now, but it's just for the demonstration. Okay, so now the, what's the right answer? Well, I don't read Chinese, but I know that this poem happens to have five words or five characters per line. So the answer to the question, what is the second? Oh, the translation the question is to see what is the second line? What is the second line? Or you, you obviously, you could ask a more difficult question. So I'm going to select the second set of five characters. This little green area here gives me a, a how to measure that. Let's start to position five. And then I look over here at length five. I can pick a color for the right answer. It's a little drop down color picker. Let's, I like blue. Save that. We're done. So now we just go back over here and reload it. We have a live question. Very easy. And we have a some HTML works in our instructions. A link would work. And let's try picking a wrong answer. Wrong selection. Let's try picking the right answer. Great. Oh, now an interesting thing here is we notice they have German feedback. I, haven't, I happen to set my preferences to write all my feedback messages to the student in German, of course. You can change that. We'll get to that in a second. Back to the main question. Let's try a tagging question. How are we doing on time? Okay. 247. This is a Spanish example. When we did an evaluation with Spanish students, um, too many tabs. Last fall, uh, we did have a Spanish instructor write a little bit of content for this, which he f found useful for his students. Primary text is this, just these short sentences. And the tagging questions, you may not need um, instructions. So it's, the tags themselves end up being instructions. So that's a little bit easier to write, actually. You present, it's kind of a, you can see it could be like a, you can think of it as a syntax diagramming, if you're a linguist, kind of challenge. You give people a sentence and some labels and have them match the labels to the text. So in this case, direct object, verb, subject. The first word is, and we're not going to ask about. The first tag is at four and two. And that's going to be the direct object, that's the right answer. I like direct objects to be, my personal preference is have a blue. Save that. Now I can add a new answer. The third word is the, what was it? No, my Spanish is too wimpy. Where did they go? 
a verb in the subject, yes. This is the verb. Start position seven, length four. Uh, verbs, I like to be green. Save that. And finally, the direct, no, oh, subject. 12, start position 12, length 5. Subject, how about um, light blue? Our, that's instantly live. We start here. The first question is still this Chinese question. Go to the next question. Direct object. Mm, let's see if I remember this. Herb, second subject over here. And I did it. All right, so you see I got all my feedback, and, and even the next question button was uh, in German. We can change that. Edit mechanical instructions, edit feedback messages. Um, in this case, we have some recommended defaults. But in this case, for my own account, I set some German default wording. So you can see I have multiple ones. There's ja, richtig und super right here. Or, and I could, in this case, I think the default is good. I'm just going to go back to that. And that will replace the answer. Um, got part right. I can make up my own shorter version here. And my own here, um, etc. That would now be instantly live. Um, let's see. Correct. So I went back to the correct instead of the German. I think that's um, I skipped creating comment screen. That's essentially like creating an instruction screen. Um, but one thing that's nice to show you is if we want to change the order of the questions, is simply drag and drop. And it's now live. The tagging question will be first instead of the Chinese question. Uh, we're trying to make this as simple as possible so your average Dutch teacher, not to talk down to Dutch people or German teacher, could handle this. Finally, one important feature is share. You can as an instructor or as, for example, an instructional technologist, help somebody edit the question. I happen to be have created this test unit, but I can add anybody else who has an account on here to have access. Let's see, I'll add my real self. Oh, other site. I'm not in a test account. I add my admin account. Um, I don't remember the name of it, did I? Is it SU admin? No. I know Sean is uh, the programmer. Yes, yeah, so, so Sean now has the ability to edit and delete questions and their answers, and feedback messages, and mechanical instructions, but he can't delete the whole unit and he can't add more collaborators. So it's a good way for an so instructor to start creating an account, ask for some help, and you, you can be a collaborator at any distance, or it can be an instructional technologist at uh, 11 p.m. on Sunday and help them out with uh, some mystery that they're trying to solve. That's the end of the main demo. I'll stop here for any questions on using this. Hey, Alan. Um, I apologize. I might have yes. missed this. How do, how do your students get access to this? Do they all need, do, do they all need accounts? The, no, the students just need a URL. They're just like you can see on the main um, syntax on Tangler home homepage. Let me add a new tab for that. It's just a public, completely public URL, like this training level I created is just created the same way you would create one. And it's just a plain old URL up here. Um, and you, so, for example, you could post that URL in, in your D2L course or Moodle course, or if you're doing a personal and learning environment kind of situation, just share the URL with them. If you want to publish your um, your content, like I've done with this training level, um, you simply post it to a website and let Google have at it. Uh, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. This is very nice. Um, you did a nice job. Thank you for your time. Um, the, a couple more slides to show. If I don't have, if I have more time. 
By my clock, you have uh, another eight minutes yet, Alan. Okay. Great. Uh, a couple things to uh, emphasize here. You're kind of following up on, um, I didn't catch your name, whoever just asked that question. Things to know, for, from especially for the learning technologists among us, is that this tool, including the instructor tool, is unlimited and free to anybody in the world. Um, we're hosting it on a on a server that uh, hosted by Do It here at Madison, which we're renting anyways for other reasons. And the impact on the server of supporting some text in a MySQL database is not not measurable, even if you had a, a thousand users. Um, it supports any languages and text. I mentioned that. So uh, nearly all written languages, the important exclusion is left to right languages, which is Hebrew and Arabic mainly. Um, we haven't. We'd, I think it would maybe be a CSS redesign question to make that work. But so far we haven't had anybody to ask for that, so we can work with some content and try that out. I already mentioned it works with any modern browser, just not with Internet Explorer versions eight and older. Um, I forgot to start the presentation. This should make it easier for you to read. Uh, the content authoring model is very flexible. You can either do um, what I've shown you so far today, which is just simple questions one after another, or you can build pretty complex drill down things, which we did in our French evaluation, in which you take a, say, a, a complicated sentence and you want to say, have students First, find where the subject and object are, which is a long German sentence, or even a French sentence can be difficult. And once they get that, present a second question using the same text, and you've shown that sub now you show with some, um, well, I didn't even get there. I was going to say pre-highlighting, which we did build in the prototype. Show where they already marked the subject and object, and now drill down into the predicate. Now let's try and analyze this long, complicated predicate a little further. And they, in a German, you can get really nested structures. And then a the third question, drilling down to the second level inside that predicate. So, um, so it's entirely in how you sequence the questions. And then the commentaries also allow you oops, to um, explain how you're the, to the student what they're moving through in the sequence. It also allows you to answer what students asked for in our test last year, which is a little more explanation of what they just did. Um, and so it could be a tran to check their comprehension, you could give the translation into English of what they just read, or you could explain um, possible wrong an answers they might have given and why, why the right answer that they found in the end, perhaps by trial and error, why the right answer is the right one, How, however you want to handle that. The pretext commentary turned out to be very useful for writing content that way. And finally, I mentioned it's a, this unit publishing model, which you get a, a, a real public URL for each unit, and allows you to structure your content in a bunch of creative ways. Then you can organize each unit per URL in any kind of hierarchy you like. You could organize it by weeks for your course and have one unit per week, or you can organize it by topic, have one syntax untangler unit per, for, say, extended adjective constructions and another one for adverbial phrases. And then in a unit, you might pull, you might in units two and seven of your course, you might refer in both places to your adverbial phrases unit, et cetera. And then it also allows you to hide or share the content simply by sharing or not sharing your URL. Um, I don't think we need to go through this, but there is, we did do some research in the current um, language learning pedagogy research that suggested that this is, in fact, um, a supportable method um, for teaching language that it addresses a number of uh, gaps that, that we face in our current teaching language teaching skill set. And that despite earlier prejudices against teaching grammar, there is, in fact, a need, especially for second language reading skills. There is a need even for advanced language uh, learners to have this, to use visual indicators to mark up their texts. And they do that mentally, essentially, it turns out. Um, and it doesn't hurt their skills. Unlike, as you may have know, teaching grammar turns out to have, turns out to hurt first language 
writing skills. And so I think there was a kind of a baby, throw out the baby with the bathwater movement in the past couple of decades. Is since it hurts first language writing skills, let's just not teach grammar anymore and just concentrate on communication. That turned out to be a little bit uh, too broad. So I think that's at the end of our, oh, I wanted to ask, um, that's right, this discussion question. I since I've had, had it, um, found it difficult to get a lot of use, uh, actually people to spend time writing content, do you think of other um, hurdles that we might face and, and maybe something we should do to this product to make it more welcoming to instructors? I see uh, one question, is there a library of resources? Um, no, that's up to you to create. If anybody creates content, I'd be happy to post it on this website. It's like if somebody's created, for example, French 101 content, I'd be, you can publish it, I can publish it, and everybody can publish it and create a library. Uh, uh, it was I heard Mary Alice, talking. I was just going to say it. We had a question from Renee, but I'm out at the website, and I was just I just grabbed one of our um, support staff in, in uh, my area, and I said, come look at what he's doing here. And uh, he is a Spanish speaking, and he also uh, helps a lot of our language arts professors. And this is the first time we've seen it, heard of it, and um, he's like running back to his desk to investigate it to see who he can get to use this, because I'm sure we'll get a number of faculty um, as soon as we show them, Alan, I think um, that's what it's going to take. So Great. Um, a lot of people need to run. It is the end of our time. Alan, thank you so much. It, it really is um, an awesome thing. I've already liked it on Facebook, which will spread the word at our campus. Uh, oh, thank you. The number of people I'm attached to there. And um, I think we need to um, get more information out on our website, but um, excellent job. So. Um, I don't know, a round of applause maybe everybody if you could for Alan. He did an outstanding, <laughs> outstanding job. So um, it, it was, from my perspective, it was money well spent.